to know. According to historical records, during the time of Buddha, ancient India was a country of many kingdoms, and to the south of the Buddha's home country, Lumbini Kapilvastu, Nepal, was the kingdom of Kasala, which was larger, more powerful, and one of the oldest states of northern India. During the time of Buddha, the ruler of Kasala was King Prasenajit. He ruled a bigger, more powerful kingdom than that of the Shakyan clan of Buddha. King Prasenajit was a follower of Buddha, and since the Shakyas were believed to be from an ancient lineage of nobles, he wanted to marry a daughter of the Shakyan king, and thought that this would increase the prestige of his kingdom. So King Prasenajit sent an ambassador to the Shakya people, the citizens of Kapilvastu, to court one of their royal princesses. But the Shakyas however, were too proud and fierce to permit one of their daughters to marry the lowly king of Kasala. They considered the Kasalans to be barbarians and refused to send in a princess as a bride. They could not however, openly defy King Prasenajit because Kasala was a much larger and more powerful kingdom that could easily crush them. So to avoid a bloodshed, the Shakya general Mahanama proposed to send his beautiful 16-year-old daughter, the Sadhakatiya, as a royal bride. The girl's mother was one of Mahanama's slaves, a woman by the name of Nagamunda. However, during those days, marriages between two different classes, such as between a princess and a worker, were unheard of. This is of course cheating, and therefore the Buddha disagreed, saying that, it was not a proper manner, to treat another nation with lies, but no one listened, and so a slave girl from Kapilvastu, was sent to King Prasenajit, to become a royal queen. When she arrived in Shravasti, capital of Kasala, she was anointed the new queen consort, in a lavish ceremony. She soon became the king's favorite, among his many queens, and all the more, when she gave birth to Virudhaka, the crown prince. When Prince Virudhaka was 16 years old, he insisted on visiting his grandparents and other relatives in Kapilvastu. His mother dissuaded him to make an official request and visit there, but he kept on insisting to visit. As she realized that she could not stop him, she sent a secret messenger ahead of the prince, begging her former masters not to reveal the truth of Prince Virudhaka's ancestry. The Shakyas were willing to cover up the truth, but not willing to have their children tainted by the presence of a slave son, who mistakenly believed he was their equal. They sent their princes off into the countryside, where they would be out of the way. When the prince Virudhaka and his men arrived at Kapilvastu, the capital of the Shakya clan, all of his relatives already gathered in the public hall. As being introduced, one by one to his relatives, Prince Virudhaka bowed back to each one of them and greeted politely, but weirdly, no one greeted him properly. Prince Virudhaka felt that, somewhat he was not welcomed. He stayed there without satisfaction, for several days. When Prince Virudhaka left Kapilvastu, and started heading home, for one of his men, went back to the city, because he had forgot his spear. There the men, saw the Shakya slaves cleaning all the furnishings, that Prince Virudhaka had used. He asked them about it, and found out that, Prince Virudhaka was considered an outcast, because his mother was in actuality, a slave, and not a princess. When this was reported back, to Prince Virudhaka, he was enraged. King Prasenajit was shocked, when he found out the truth. In order to protect himself from scandal, he had to strip Virudhaka, and his mother, of all rank, and relegate them to the slave quarters. But after this unfortunate incident, the Buddha visited Shravasti, the capital of Kasala. King Prasenajit told him about the incident and how he felt. The Buddha admitted the Shakya clan's fault. Also he explained the justification of Virudhaka and his mother and persuaded King Prasenajit that his action was wrong. King Prasenajit's mind at last became clear when he understood the Buddha's heart. He heeded the Buddha's advice and gave back Virudhaka and his mother the original positions and put their life back to what it was before. But Prince Virudhaka's heart was never clear. He would never forget this humiliation however. He determined to avenge himself against the Shakyas. So he hired a Brahmin to remind him of the vow. Three times a day, when I become king, I will see to it that the Shakyas' homes are washed again in their own blood. When the Buddha learned of the incident, he knew that the fate of his own country was dated. Because everything that the Shakya people did was against the law of karma. 
After King Sudhadana had passed away, General Mahanama became the king of Kapilvastu. Many years had passed, and there had been peace between the two countries, because both the kin and queen of Kasala were the Buddha's followers, but the world is such an impermanent place to live, that one day, peace came to an end. Soon King Prasenajit, at the age of 80 years old, died of sickness. Meanwhile, Prince Virudhaka, having seized power announced that, he was now king of Kasala, and declared war on Kapilavastu. He gathered his army, and marched on Kapilavastu. When the Buddha learned of the impending conflict, he tried to stop the Kasalan army, by meditating under a dead tree. As the king noticed the Buddha, he stopped his army, walked toward the Buddha, and prayed in front of him, because he hadn't lost all respect and gratitude, to the Buddha. King Virudhaka, saw the Buddha sitting there, and asked him, even though the sun is shining brightly, why are you sitting under such a dying tree, that has only a few leaves? Please sit under that Nagradha tree, that have enough leaves. The Buddha replied, it is one's own relations, who provide the coolest shade. King Virudhaka understood, that the Buddha was asking him, to spare his kinsmen. When he realized it, he prayed for the Buddha, and returned to Savatthi with his army. King Virudhaka may also have felt a sense of gratitude to the Buddha for helping him when King Prasenajit had sent he and his mother to the slave quarters. The Brahmin, however, continued to remind King Virudhaka of his vow to bathe Kapilvastu in the blood of the Shakyas. So a few days after this, he set out with his army again for invasion. But again, when he found the Buddha sitting under the dying tree, he retrieved the army. And several days passed, Virudhaka started the third attempt of invasion of his army. However, the Buddha was again sitting under the dying tree. When Virudhaka saw the Buddha, he could not help but returning. Then at the fourth time, he moved his army as he was moved by an unstopping need for revenge. At that moment, the Buddha in the Jita Grove Monastery went into a deep meditations and observed in details what the Shakaya clan had done. He realized that, in remonstrating with the king, on the previous three occasions, he had done all he could, but that king Virudhaka's grudge, would not abate. He saw that the fruit of the bad deeds, that the Shakaya clan had committed, since before long time, like killing many animals and humans, had ripened enough to the limit. The Shakaya clan were the outstanding people, but they were also snobbish, and despised others, thus this kind of karma, had not been purified. Even the Buddha, could not change the law of karma, just for his personal reason. This time, the Buddha did not move his body, to save the Shakaya clan. King Virudhaka and his huge army, finally crossed the border, and invaded the Shakaya clan's territory. They went up to the capital Kapilvastu, and started killing the people. When the army broke into the castle, Mahanama stood in front of Virudhaka, because he felt a huge responsibility, by facing his clan's tragedy. Mahanama requested King Virudhaka to stop any more killings for his sake, but King Virudhaka denied his request and replied, No, if I stop killing the Shakaya clan, I will have to live in shame. I cannot stop this, but I spare your life. Just go away anywhere you want. Mahanama then requested to accept his wish and said, I am going to dive into this pond. Please stop all your soldiers from killing until I come up to the surface of the pond. King Virudhaka accepted his wish, and said, All right, as soon as you come up, I will kill them all. Mahanama then quickly jumped into the pond, and he tied up the roots of a tree, at the bottom of the pond, with his hair. 5, 10, 20 minutes passed, he did not come up to the surface. Virudhaka then ordered one of his army, to take a look at under the water. But they found Mahamana already dead, at the bottom of the pond. During this time, a large number of the Shakayans were able to escape. Mahanama gave up his life, to save his Shakaya clans. Soon the massacre restarted. They raised Kapilavastu, and massacred the Shakayas. Young, old, men, women and children were killed. Upon returning to Shavasti, King Virudhaka sought out his brother Prince Jita. As a lay follower of the Buddha, Prince Jita refused to participate in the destruction of the Shakyas, instead, he stayed behind in the palace, seeking out women and music as a diversion. Angered by Prince Jita's defiance, King Virudhaka killed him, so ended the lives of the Buddha's clan and his last royal patron in Shravasti.
Seven days later, while encamped on a riverbank, King Virudhaka and his army were swept away by a flash flood. This is the tragedy that happened during the late years of the Buddha, possibly a year before he passed away. The Shakaya clan became almost extinct. Survivors were a few who scattered away, mostly lay followers students and women students, nuns. Through this sad incident, the Buddha meditated harder and harder. He realized that it is necessary that his teachings be such that they enable not only the Buddhist monks, but also for the lay followers to practice cutting bad karma and achieving enlightenment. It may be difficult in this era, but there will be a time where everyone can practice. His compassionate eyes had perceived the people in the distant future. Thus the Buddha made his mind firmly to expound Mahaparinirvana Sutra. The Buddha started his final journey toward the Sala Grove in Kushinagara, quietly gazing at the future. Thanks for watching the video. For more update to my new videos, press the bell icon. And please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to support my channel. Thank you.